Hi, I'm Liz Needham. Let's have a look at some examples of sample space. So if I'm talking about a single dice, then think about the fact that each dice has six different faces on it. And so when we come to look at the sample space, we're looking at all of the possible outcomes. So when we roll a dice, here are our different possible outcomes. We could get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5 or a 6. So those are our sample space. So I would simply just write sample space equals and I would list out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What about if I have the spinner? So in this spinner I need to think well when I spin it what would happen? And so the sample space, the possible outcomes is I could get an A, I could get a B, I could get a C, or I could get a D. So that is my sample spaces, A, B, C, and D. What if I'm rolling two dice, however? So you'll notice I've got a table here now, and I've got my first dice up the top, and I've got my second dice down the side. So these are the two things that are going to happen. Now on my first dice, I've got all the options there. I could get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And with the second dice, I could get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So what I need to do in terms of making my list is think about the combination. So I could roll the first dice and get a 1. And that then, if I roll the second dice and get a 1, that would give me a 1 for the first dice and a 1 for the second dice. So I've written 1, 1, meaning 1 for the first dice and then 1 for the second dice. If I go down that column, so I'm going to continue, all of these options here are going to continue getting a 1 on the first dice. But on the second dice, I could get a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. If I extend that, well on this first dice I could get a 2, I could get a 3, I could get a 4, I could get a 5, I could get a 6. So you'll notice that the first number I write, that is the number I could get on my first dice. And the second number I write is the number I get on my second dice. So I could, if I just do the um, first row, finish that, that would be, that matches up with getting a 1 on my second dice. So that would be what I get there, is a 1 on the second dice. And then I need to fill the entire table in, so I'm going to go um, across the next row and say, OK, well that would be getting a 2 on my first dice and a 2 on my second, a 3 on my first and a 2 on the second, a 4 on the first and a 2 on the second, 5 and 2, 6 and 2. If I go down, then that would be 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6, and so on. So I'm just going to fill in the rest of this table. And what it tells me is that there are a lot of different combinations that I could get when I roll two dice. And in fact, if I count up how many different combinations there are on the table here, I will find that there are 36 different ways, different combinations that I could get. So if I add up all of those there, <clears throat> that tells me there are 36 different ways that I could get a combination of numbers on two dice. And that comes from the fact that the first dice has six possible ways that I could do it, and the second dice has six possible ways that I could do it. Six times six gives me 36 different combinations. Thanks for watching.